Surprisingly, the computer selected two cookies for me to hybridize. I'm sure the majority of you have made or at least eaten chocolate chip cookies before, so I won't belabor the topic. Instead, let's invest some time in talking about the lesser known cookie, Yakwa. I put lesser known in quotes because these cookies are actually very well known in Korea, just not here in the States. In Korean, yak means medicine and gua means confection. So the literal translation of yakwa is medicinal confection. And the name largely stems from the fact that honey is used in its preparation and honey was thought to have medicinal properties. This deep fried honey soaked cookie has one of the oldest histories in Korean cuisine. The cookie is said to have first been created sometime between 57 BCE and 935 CE for Buddhist ancestral rites. These are ceremonies in which families pay tribute to their deceased ancestors. In addition to being used as offerings during these ancestral rite ceremonies, yakwa were enjoyed on festive occasions like the Chuseok Harvest Festival as well as marriages. But nowadays you can find yakwa at Korean coffee shops, tea houses, and even at supermarkets. There are two components to yakwa, the laminated wheat cookie itself and the syrup that you soak the cookies in. I made my reference yakwa using a patchwork of different recipes I found online, but I largely followed the dough and syrup formulation shown in this video by Olivia Mason. Let me walk you through the steps of making yakwa. Here are the ingredients you need to make these cookies. This recipe is actually quite involved. You first sift the flour, pepper, cinnamon, and salt, then add sesame oil and rub the mixture between the palms of your hand to evenly coat the flour with the oil. After passing this mixture through a fine mesh strainer, you add the sugar syrup and alcohol and incorporate the ingredients together using a cutting motion rather than a kneading motion. You place the dough in the fridge to rest and hydrate for 30 to 60 minutes before moving on. My dough actually turned out a lot crumblier than the dough shown in the video, but I decided to trust that the flour would hydrate during its rest in the fridge, um, and it, it didn't. You can see here that the dough is still very crumbly and dry, but after laminating and folding the dough a few times, it eventually held together in one cohesive piece and developed some elasticity. After laminating the dough, you roll it out, trim the edges, portion the dough into three centimeter squares, dock the dough a few times, which I later found out actually isn't really a necessary step, then fry the dough in 230 degrees Fahrenheit oil. When they float to the surface, increase the frying temperature to 302 degrees Fahrenheit and fry until they're golden brown. You may be thinking to yourself, wow, 230 degrees Fahrenheit? That's an awfully low temperature to be frying at. And you're right. The majority of things that I've fried in the past require temperatures ranging from 325 to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. However, these yakwa cookies are incredibly dense and the low frying temperature ensures that they fully cook. I actually tested a few cookies where I deep fried them in 350 degrees Fahrenheit until they were golden brown, which took about two minutes and found that they were severely undercooked. Okay, so while those cookies are draining and cooling, you prepare the soaking syrup. And here are the ingredients you need. The syrup is simple. You bring the rice syrup, honey, water, cinnamon, and ginger to a boil over high heat, then simmer on low for 15 to 20 minutes. While the syrup's still warm, you pour it over the fried yakwa and allow the cookies to soak for six to 24 hours. After the soaking period, you transfer the cookies to a rack and allow the excess syrup to drain. Just look at the texture of the syrup. It's, it's oddly mucilaginous. You can eat the yakwa as is, or flourish the cookies with jujube and pine nuts, which are very common decorations for traditional Korean confections. It's really interesting to compare and contrast a Western cookie with an Eastern cookie, assuming we can categorize yakwa as a cookie. Not surprisingly, the flavor profiles of these two cookies are completely different. This chocolate chip cookie tastes of butter, molasses, and chocolate, and it's incredibly sweet. This cookie is about 26% sugar, and that's not even factoring in the sugar in the chocolate. The yakwa, on the other hand, have a very tame sweetness, even though they sat in a honey syrup for 24 hours. You can still taste the honey and cinnamon, but it's a dessert that borders on the savory side, largely because it tastes like fried dough. Surprisingly, the sesame oil isn't overpowering. If you've used sesame oil before, then you know it's an extremely aromatic oil, but frying it in peanut oil does a good job of tempering the fragrance. The steps used to prepare these two cookies also differ drastically. However, they do have a common goal, not overdeveloping gluten. Before we dive into the specifics, I think it's important for us to be on the same page in terms of what gluten is and how it forms. If you've ever bitten into a chewy, airy loaf of bread, then you've experienced the wonders of gluten. Gluten is what gives wheat-based doughs the ability to stretch, and it's this elasticity that allows the dough to trap gases. Depending on what you're baking, that could mean the gases produced from yeast activity, chemical leaveners, or steam. 
Gluten makes the dough elastic enough that these trapped air pockets can expand like a balloon without tearing the dough. There are two proteins in wheat flour that are responsible for gluten development, gliadin and glutenin. When you add water to wheat flour, you partially hydrate these two proteins, causing them to uncoil and form bonds with each other, eventually creating a protein mesh called gluten. It's this protein mesh that allows the entrapment of air and provides baked goods with structure. But sometimes you don't want to develop gluten, like in the case of cakes. Who wants a chewy, stringy piece of cake? Interestingly, however, overdeveloping gluten in a cookie dough results not in a chewy cookie, but a dry, hard, crumbly cookie. Both the chocolate chip cookie recipe and the yakwa recipe want to minimize gluten development. The chocolate chip cookie does this by telling bakers to limit the amount of mixing they do when incorporating the flour, and the yakwa recipe runs the gamut of techniques. The first technique is coating the flour with oil. Fats impede gluten formation by coating gliadin and glutenin strands. The coating acts like a barrier that physically prevents these proteins from bonding to one another, ultimately impeding the development of a strong gluten mesh. The second gluten inhibiting step that yakwa recipes employ is the use of a small volume of water. Remember that water is the driving catalyst in gluten formation. The flour has to be sufficiently hydrated to activate the proteins that form gluten. The only water we added to the yakwa dough was the water in the simple syrup and the alcohol, which amounts to about 20% hydration. The third technique is the addition of alcohol to the dough. Glutenin and gliadin dissolve in the alcohol and don't unfold to make contact with each other as they would in water. All these gluten inhibiting steps plus the lamination resulted in a very dense, crumbly textured cookie. The chocolate chip cookies on the other hand had crispy edges and a soft chewy center. The chewiness isn't from gluten. It's primarily a result of well hydrated starches in the flour and the hydroscopic or water loving nature of brown sugar. Okay, so let's move on to talking about my ideas for the hybrid. Since lamination is such a key feature of yakwa, I definitely need to incorporate that technique when making the hybrid. And the most obvious route is to laminate the yakwa dough and chocolate chip cookie dough together to form some variant of a puff pastry. The yakwa dough will play the role of the de Trump, and the chocolate chip cookie dough will play the role of the butter block or the barrage. When making puff pastry, it's important that your de Trump dough has some elasticity, Otherwise, the dough will just rip during the rolling and folding. I am concerned about using yakwa dough as the de Trump because it's not a very elastic dough, and the only way to develop some semblance of elasticity is by laminating it onto itself. It's very difficult to develop gluten in this dough using traditional kneading motions because of all the gluten inhibiting steps that the recipe uses. I tried kneading the yakwa dough in a food processor and a stand mixer, and neither method showed promising results. It's possible that I could eventually develop an elastic dough using these machines, but not before I blew out their motors. Also, keep in mind that this dough has been hydrating in the fridge for 24 hours, which should be sufficient time for the flour to hydrate and for gluten form on its own, but you can see that the dough just wants to tear whenever manipulated. All of this is to say that I need to laminate the yakwa dough onto itself before I can fold in the chocolate chip cookie dough which I reformulated to act more like a traditional barrage. Specifically, I decreased the amount of flour by 50% and eliminated the baking powder and baking soda. Water from the eggs, sugars, and butter should provide sufficient steam to lift the yakwa layers apart if I laminate properly. Let's talk about the chocolate. So firstly, I can't just use chocolate chips or large chunks of chocolate because they'll just pierce through the dough when I'm laminating. My best bet is to use chocolate shavings. The plan is to incorporate the cookie dough and chocolate at different stages of the lamination process because I am concerned that the chocolate shavings will just disintegrate into the cookie dough during the rolling and folding. Here are two chocolate chips from two different manufacturers. The right chip is from Trader Joe's and the left is from Ghirardelli. I place both chocolate chips in a 100 degree Fahrenheit water bath for two minutes and you can clearly see that the Trader Joe's chocolate chip melted less. And this is the chocolate I need to use if I want any chance of there being any chocolate left in the hybrid after frying it. The Trader Joe's chocolate chip doesn't melt as readily as Ghirardelli's because of its lower cocoa butter content. Here's footage of me attempting to laminate these two doughs together, and you can probably already tell that I'm running into some issues. I'll point out three of the major ones. Issue one, the chocolate chip cookie dough doesn't have the same texture as a traditional barrage. It's much softer because of its higher sugar content. This is the cookie dough barrage after chilling in the fridge for 24 hours. The softness makes it easier to squeeze and spill out of the yakwa dough during rolling. Issue two, the yakwa dough doesn't want to adhere onto itself, which is an issue when you have a lot of overhanging dough like I do here. It isn't an ideal situation, 
but I purposefully wanted the yakwa dough to overlap with itself when enrobing the barrage to minimize the chance of the barrage squeezing out. And because the dough isn't as tacky as normal dough, the chocolate shavings didn't want to adhere. And lastly, the yakwa dough began to tear, which means that when we go to fry or bake this hybrid, we won't achieve very distinct separated layers. Okay, so the lamination didn't really go as well as I'd hoped. And after cooking this dough in as many ways as I could think of in hopes of stumbling onto something great, I present to you a collection of <sighs> hot messes. No matter, I finished them off with a drizzle of honey, taste tested them with Tom, and here are our notes. Method one, not a huge fan. The sesame oil was way too overpowering, and it didn't blend well with the other flavors. Method two, actually not that bad, but the predominant flavor is the fried yakwa dough. It tastes like yakwa with chocolate chips. The texture is crunchy and similar to Chips Ahoy chocolate chip cookies. Method three, not much different from method two. The extra cookie dough doesn't really add anything, especially with a honey drizzle. Method four, did not like. The only thing you could taste was the batter and everything on the inside was soft. So out of the four methods, flash frying then baking produced the best result. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed with how this hybrid bake went. Um, and it's really starting to set in how difficult these West meets East hybrid bakes are going to be. Um, combining an Eastern dessert with a Western dessert is significantly more challenging than just combining two Western desserts. But I am determined to continue these. Will I make this hybrid again? No, not without drastically reformulating the recipe. And I already have a few things in mind. Number one, replacing the sesame oil with clarified butter. In its current form, the flavors of the two doughs don't really pair well together, I think in large part because of the sesame oil in the yakwa dough. Number two, going all in and using a real chocolate chip cookie dough as the barrage. In its current form, the barrage that I use in this recipe leans a little more heavily on the side of a compound butter rather than a true cookie dough. And three, reformulating the yakwa dough. There are modern takes of yakwa that are more similar to what Westerners would classify as a cookie. There's no coating the oil with flour, no lamination, and even the ingredients are different. Modern variants include eggs. So I think this recipe is a good starting off point if you are interested in hybridizing these two desserts. You can find the recipe following the link in the description. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.